Hey everybody, how's it going? Coming out here to Shafter, to the uh, Railroad Depot Museum here. This is along the uh, BNSF tracks, and they are having their Railroad Day and open house, so they can showcase their uh, caboose that they just got all ready to go. We'll go in there in a little while. But anyway, uh, thought I'd come out here and catch this for everybody. Uh, so let's go in and check out the Shafter Depot Museum's Open House and Railroad Day. Okay, we are inside what was, I assume, the passenger waiting room at one time. So uh, as I am not that familiar with this place, I am going to let Stan give us the tour. All right. This uh, building was built in 1917 by the Santa Fe Railroad, replaced a box car depot that had been erected here earlier. Uh, we are in the waiting room and uh, uh, next to the ticket window and uh, back here is the uh, last timetable uh, when trains actually stopped here and on uh, May the 1st of 1971. And is that the original time, t the timetable that's original to this building? Yes, it is. Awesome. And, uh, uh, train 1 and 2 are the San Francisco Chief. There's Mickey Gladden. We golf together. Hello, well, guys. we golf on the same course. We have to yeah. Is that uh, clock original to this building? Yes. Yeah. Is it? Yes, that is a postal telegraph uh, top, uh, clock. Uh, the Santa Fe had postal telegraph. The Southern Pacific had Western Union. But when they merged, uh, postal telegraph became part of Western Union, and then the Western Union had an office here in the, in the depot. Very cool. All right, well, let's move on to the next room. Nice waiting room bench there, a little different than the ones in Tehachapi. And your name, who are you guys? Huh? Presley Benino, I am the son of the assistant curator. Oh, cool. And your name? Cool. Nice safe. All right. All right, this, this is our uh, dining car. Uh, display. Oh, uh, nothing could be finer than dinner in the diner. And we have exhibited here on the right hand side of the case, the Southern Pacific uh, patterns, uh, Prairie Mountain pattern, and on the left hand, -hand side, the Santa Fe uh, uh, dining car china, which is uh, California Poppy, which was the oldest and longest living uh, dining uh, car pattern that was used on the railroads. It represents the China that was used basically on the trains in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, the, uh, San Francisco Chief and the Golden Gates used the California Poppy, the San Joaquin Daylight, Prairie Mountain. Santa Fe system map from 1925. 1925. I love maps. Okay, here. Uh, this is the agent's office. You can see the back side of the ticket window. Uh, the bay. Uh, the bay uh, window over here uh, with the uh, telegraph equipment and the frame phone and, and uh, we have a working telegraph key over here. That's pretty. Now when did they uh, get rid of the agent's job, do you know? Uh, when the depot was retired in 1978, in August of uh, 1978, the uh, depot was closed and the agency was abolished. Now this depot was moved to this location, it right? It was moved here in 1980. The Santa Fe Railroad uh, gave the depot to the, uh, to the community, but not the property upon which it sits. So the uh, Historical Society uh, obtained by donation this piece of land here, still next to the railroad, the three blocks. Uh, to the north or railroad west of the original location. Did you recognize this? Yeah, we have one of those in town. Uh, that's oh. a mate, that one. You know, Stokey has got this one. Oh, did he? Yeah, I think he got all four of those. Probably. Uh, he told me at the time the four museums that got one. We, oh, we were, I, I didn't know that. We were, yeah, there was a set of four that were cut out of the track. And uh, the bell? Okay, this is a uh, presentation bell. When the Santa Fe retired uh, steam locomotives, uh, they they uh, took them off the steam engines and, and, and made this little uh, frame to hold them in and gave them to uh, high-ranking officials or uh, high-volume customers. 
And so uh, they put this little plaque on here, presented by the ATNSF Railroad. Uh, this uh, bell came off of engine number 3209, which was a 282. And over in our exhibit case here, we have an HO, HO model of engine 3209 to match the, uh, the uh, bell which uh, came from that engine. Very cool. And that's a nice uh, display of some model railroad stuff. So this this uh, display uh, on the uh, on the top shelf is a HO uh, train with a group of uh, Santa Fe refrigerator cars, all having their uh, logo uh, passenger train advertisements on the, on the sides of the cars. Uh, the rest of the exhibit is an N gauge. And there are four passenger trains here uh, depicted, uh, each one which would have stopped here at Shafter during a particular era. Oh. On, on the bottom, we have a uh, Alco S2 switcher uh, with about uh, 10 uh, refrigerator cars. Uh, each one represents uh, potatoes which would have been shipped out of Shafter. Uh, in, in these particular uh, railroad company cars. Well, did there's their... Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I was... Uh, when I got here, there was a young lady who's part of the museum named Stephanie, and I don't recall how we encountered each other quite a few years ago, but uh, she said she was trying to find some insulators and some pole line stuff, and I brought in a cross... I brought in that cross arm and a bunch of insulators... Of different kinds, the ones that the beehives and these ones are all cleaned up. But uh, yeah, glad to see it got put to use. And this is a representation, I take it, of the Shafter Depot. Yes, uh, when it was built in 1917, the original paint scheme was uh, uh, a dark red with a charcoal gray uh, trim. Head upstairs here. Okay, and this, and this, I'm assuming, was the agent's. Yes. As with most depots, it had a second story. This is where the agent and his family would have lived. And in some cases, multiple agents if they were single. It's actually pretty roomy. Yeah. Nice ceiling, tiny groove. Beautiful. And this is Stephanie. She's been trying to hide from me all this time, stay off camera. But anyway, uh, Stephanie and I uh, did, she's the one that I brought the uh, pull line equipment to all those many years ago. And I'm glad to see that you're still involved with the museum. Of course, I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. I'm glad you walked in. I, as soon as I saw you walking, I was like, I know that face. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for coming in today and for featuring our museum so that others can hopefully come and find us. My pleasure. This is our World War II uh, exhibit. Uh, consists of a military map, uh, important uh, newspaper uh, headlines, uh, a war map, and all kinds of paraphernalia that soldiers would have used or that civilians would have used uh, during the war, such as uh, war ration books, and also uh, a few items from the German prisoner of war camp that was located in Shafter. <coughs> This is uh, uh, a case dedicated to uh, two gentlemen who were members of the Historical Society. They were both uh, served in World War II. And then on the left, Jim Gleckler, a recipient of numerous medals, which are on display there. Uh, he was an infantryman. Uh, the man on the right, uh, uh, James Albright, uh, served as a gunner. 
and a B-17 bomber. Stuff here. Yeah, and this is the Yokuts, for those of you who don't know, were the natives of the native of this area. And uh, they were from the southern San Joaquin Valley, southern end of the valley, up into uh, the Visalia area, and all the way across the valley from one, one side to the other. Shafter is was established as a farming community and has remained that way essentially to this very day, as are most of the valley towns. Dairies are a big part of this area. Some vintage cameras, very cool. You're gonna hear a train go flying by here in a minute. This is a busy line. I mean, probably catch one while we're outside here in a little while. And they're not going 23 miles an hour like they are in Tehachapi. Oh, nice globe. I love globes. They're just spherical maps. They still have their freight scale. That was the only thing that was lost in the Tehachapi fire. Okay, this is a ice refrigerator car, also known as a reefer. Uh, it was given to us by the Santa Fe Railroad in the early 1980s. Uh, one of the last ice refrigerator cars still on the railroad at the time. Uh, and, and we wanted to have this car on exhibit here because it represents hundreds and virtually thousands of cars of potatoes which were shipped uh, every season uh, filled with potatoes from the Shafter District. The cars were iced daily at Bakersfield. The picture there shows the icing dock uh, at Bakersfield. Uh, and uh, that night, the uh, after they were iced, they were sorted and sent on their way across the country, wherever their destination was. And uh, depending on the uh, weather and the length that they needed to travel, they would have to stop at various icing stations across the country uh, as, they, as they traveled eastward. So this is a diagram of how the ice refrigerator car works. Uh, uh, there's a raised floor and uh, the air moves basically a rotational air moving through the ice down into the floor and around and uh, fans that are connected to the axles uh, at least uh, work while the trains in transit. You can see the, I'm sorry. the space where they kept the ice and the vents where the uh, cold air came through. Also, then the floors were vented. This is an interesting piece because uh, one year in about 1953 uh, or so, uh, the Santa Fe froze these medallions and blocks of ice at the Santa Fe ice uh, plant, Bakersfield. They brought these blocks of ice out to Shafter and put them along the uh, street for the annual Shafter parade. <laughs> uh, so quite a, quite a promotion on the part of the railroad. Uh, uh, promoting their uh, ice refrigeration service, and this is one of the original medallions that was frozen a block of ice. All right, we will get back to some of the railroad stuff here in a minute, but I wanted to go through the uh, agricultural exhibit as well. And as we walk in here, we see the a potato packing line from uh, 1937. Uh, it, it represents the change of potato packing from field packing to shed packing. And that came about because the consumer wanted washed, sized, and grated potatoes rather than just dirty potatoes that came out of the ground. I have over here a exhibit showing uh, the different potato brands that were used in uh, shipping potatoes of Shafter. We have a collection here that shows over 300 uh, individual potato brands that were once uh, in use. Potato sorting table there. So this is our potato cutting equipment, the seed cutting, the seed is cut into pieces. Uh, instead of whole potatoes being planted, they're as long as they're Each piece needs 
to be at least an ounce in size and have an eye on it to grow. Now, these are various potato planters. This is a collection of potato diggers and paint from the ceiling. You have a two horse bottle. On the floor here is a four horse bottle. And over here is a tractor uh, bottle. So each year, each as they have more horsepower, they can have bigger and larger uh, machines. old vintage tractors. For all of my viewers who like old cars and trucks, you know, international, and a Samson. surplus by the U.S. Army and at the end of World War II and was transferred it to the USDA cotton station in Shafter, uh, where it stayed until uh, 1959. Uh, picking sacks, and this is the transition from hand picking to mechanical pit picking, which uh, became in full force after World War II. Uh, this picker is about 1950, and by uh, five or six years after this introduction, there was almost no hand-picking left. Fairmont uh, section car model S2, series E, built about 1940. Uh, the, uh, on the uh, cart is a number of track tools that the section crew would have taken out to them as they went daily to work on the track. He and car. Velocipedes. This is our new caboose. It uh, uh, was built in 1942, rebuilt in 1969, retired in 1988, and uh, purchased by a man by the name of J.R. Francis, who uh, put it into his, uh, took it to his home, where he created a little railroad park. Uh, it stayed there for 32 years until he passed away and the heirs donated to the museum last year. And so it's begun its new life here at the museum as an exhibit. And uh, we have uh, repainted it on the outside and somewhat restored it in the inside. And uh, so that was the reason for it. the occasion today would be the grand opening of the caboose. This is not original. This is what should be here. Diesel stove. <laughs> uh, Mr. Francis thought it would be neat to have an antique stove in his caboose, so he found this one and put it in and replaced it with the original diesel stove. <laughs> it's in pretty good shape. Conductor's desk. Set in his chair, he'd probably hit you in the head with his watch or something. Painting of a Santa Fe, a Cajon Pass. Then I call it fruit basket, uh, wig lag signal. Uh, actually came from Pacific Electric in Southern California. Uh, this over here is an automatic uh, block signal, uh, Santa Fe uh, style. Uh, that was donated recently with the caboose, and uh, that was in use from about 1910 and 1950 on the Santa Fe Railroad. Anyway, yeah. upper quadrant, some four. Cool. And, the, and this, you said, Stoko is one of Stoko? Yes. And uh, this peach basket or fruit basket, whichever you call them, uh, wigwag was donated by Bill Stoko to the museum. Phone booth slash tool house, depending on what area you were in. This was a phone booth? Okay. Santa Fe's phone booth. SP had concrete. Yeah. And 
Santa Fe had these little wooden. Uh, What's the story behind this one? Okay, this, this caboose was made about 1910. It's a side door caboose. Uh, they called them widow makers because they were uh, very dangerous to get on and off, especially if the train was moving. They did not have any end platforms. They did not have any stairs on the ends. They just had side mount. Uh, they were retired fairly early by the Santa Fe Railroad. Uh, this one was retired in 1936. Cool. This sounds like an Amtrak. Let over here. Darn sure don't take them long to go by. Inside the wooden, this is another cupola type, obviously. Looks like a jail. <laughs> this has got a big conductor's desk. As you can see, this is a really nicely restored uh, depot. Done a really good job. The uh, wigwag there, he said, came out of Dinuba, which is on, would have been on one of the uh, branch lines off the east side. I don't know if that was a, you said that was an SP? Yes. So that would have been on the east side branch up in Dinuba. The Santa Fe and the SP parallel each other up through through almost all of those towns and that was a Southern Pacific train order signal and before all you uh, perfectionists start hollering about it not being right for Santa Fe Stan has already explained that those blades need to be painted black all right well that's going to conclude the tour of the Shafter Railroad Depot Museum in Shafter California for all of those who don't know, Shafter is about 15 miles north of Bakersfield. I want to thank Stan and Stephanie and the rest of the crew here for uh, allowing me to do this and uh, being a guide through this and helping me out. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, here are the URLs for my PayPal and my Patreon. If you can help the channel out that way, I'd sure appreciate it. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motopoet59 at gmail.com. Like. Share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content, like that bell there, and we will see you all later.